there has always been uh, conspiracy theories. They always claim that Novus Ordo Seclorum um, meant like, uh, you know, has to do with uh, secret societies, etc. But most people don't know that Novus Ordo Seclorum actually derives from Virgil. It actually, it does mean new age, the new world order, but it actually means the new age uh, of man, which has to do with uh, astrology and the age of, uh, with some esotericists would, would, would say the age of Aquarius. So let's see. All right, so according to Manly P. Hall in his book, The Secret Destiny of America, he states that the ancients believed the earth to be surrounded by the sphere of the constellations. And they are assigned to each country the star groups, which were above the country's particular area of land. In the arrangement preserved in the writings of Aratus of Sali, the constellation of the eagle spreads its wings across the North American continent. The serpent winds its coil over Mexico and Central America, and the dragon floats in the sky above Japan and China. Perhaps Sir Edward Landseer was not far wrong when he declared that the symbols of nations and the emblems peculiar to the uh, Haraji originated in their ruling constellations. Basically, what he's saying is that the, in astrology, you know, as you know, the, in the United States, we have the symbol of the eagle because uh, the eagle is a sign of Scorpio um, and the United States is on the constellation of the eagle. So we have the the symbol of, uh, of the eagle to represent the United States. Just like in China, they have the dragon because it can stand for um, um, uh, the constellation of uh, uh, dra uh, the dragon constellation over there. Forgot the, the term for it. But every country is under the zodiac sign for whatever reason. Um, that's why in Mexico, as he said, the serpent wins his coil over Mexico and Central America as well. So the, there is a book, I'm sorry, I went too far, but there is a book by Francis Bacon. Now, according to Rosicrucians, right, uh, Francis Bacon was apparently the, uh, his real name was called, supposedly uh, Shakespeare. He obtained this name because uh, to represent, he got the name from um, Pallas Athena. So Pallas Athena was the goddess of wisdom and she had a helmet and she had a spear. So the symbol of the helmet represents wisdom and the spear represents shaking off the of ignorance. So you take the spear and you shake it. So he got the word Shakespeare. So they claim that Francis Bacon was actually Shakespeare and apparently the first uh, periator of the Rosicrucians. So he wrote a book uh, called The New Atlantis. And The New Atlantis is a book that you can actually buy online, but he basically states that um, the Rosicrucians, or if you wanna say the Freemasons, they chose the United States of America because they wanted this new age, this new Amer United States to be this new Atlantean uh, continent that this continent that once existed approximately maybe 12,000 years ago in the age of cancer, which I will discuss later on. If you read the book, The New Atlantis, you can see it has a lot of Masonic, um, uh, you know, literature in it. And some people claim that he was also one of the founders of Freemasonry, you know, uh, if you choose to believe that, and also if you choose to believe that he was the first imperiator of the Rosicrucian Oath, and supposedly he was the bastard son of Queen Elizabeth I. So this little piece here is actually from the New Atlantean, and you can actually see some Freemasonic references. As he says, they rhymed in this island about 1900 years ago, a king whose memory of all others we must adore, not superstitiously, but as divine instrument. Though a mortal man, his name was Solomona, as in Solomon, and we esteem him as the lawgiver of our nation. This king had a large heart, inscrutable for good, and was wholly bent to make his kingdom and people happy. Amongst the excellent acts 
of that king, one above all, had the preeminence. It was the erection and institution of an order or society which we call Solomon's house. The noblest foundation, as we think, that ever was upon the earth and the lanthorn of this kingdom. It is dedicated to the study of the works and creature of God. Some think it bereft the founder's name a little corrupted as if it should be Solomon's house. But the records write, write it as it is spoken. So as I take it to be denominated of the king of the Hebrews, which is famous with you and no stranger for us, for we have parts of this works, which we are lost. And I'm going to end it there. But as you can see, it mentions Solomon and the house of Solomon and the secret societies. Um, remember, this book is, is a, it's not uh, literal. It's a, it's a story of a supposedly this secret society come into the United States. Um, with to uh, make this, they chose to make this uh, uh, this new age uh, of enlightenment. You can say, because some people claim that the Masons and the Rosicrucians knew this type of secret knowledge or astrology, as you were say, or some claim the science of the soul. Now, according to Virgil, he mentions this age too. See, a lot of the philosophers at the time, if you read Virgil and you read Plutarch, and you read um, uh, Seneca, uh, and all these other philosophers at the time who were initiated in the mysteries, and he knew astrology. They knew this new age. They knew that this new age of enlightenment was occurring. That's why when you read the book Saturnalia, which was the origin of Christmas, uh, Seneca mentions um, the, this new age, of enlightenment, that Saturn rules the golden age. You know, we, Plato gives us the five ages, right? Bronze age, iron age, silver age, and the golden age. The uh, Hindus have the yugas, right? Uh, they have uh, uh, Kali Yuga, Treta Yuga, uh, you know, uh, Trabawa Yuga. Supposedly we are heading to Trabawa Yuga, which is this golden age, the age of electricity. The dark age for the Hindus was called Kali Yuga, right? And as we, we do know that um, when the whole pandemic happened, supposedly the four planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, all of them were in conjunction and which supposedly was the cause and the, uh, the pinpoint of this new age that's occurring now, which and Aquarius, some people, some astrologers claim that. And the reason some uh, esoteric fraternities also claim that because the last time this happened was in Germany in 16, uh, I forgot the age, the, the, the year, but when the Rosicrucian manifestos were written and this new secret brotherhood came to be, which is uh, the Rosicrucians. And they actually knew about this new age. So Virgil, and his book says, now it's come the last age of Kumian song. The great line of the centuries begins anew. Now the virgin returns the rhine of Saturn. As I said, Saturn rules the golden age. Saturn returns. Now a new generation descends from heaven on high. Only do you, pure Lucina, smile on the birth of the child, under whom the iron brood shall at least cease in a golden race spring up throughout the world and your own Apollo now is king so I would explain to you what he means here the virgin um you know the opposite you know we, 2000 you know we was in the age of Pisces and the opposite of Pisces is Virgo right so this is why he says the virgin returns but the reign of Saturn which is Aquarius is the the ruler of Aquarius is Saturn and now a new generation descends from heaven on high. Only you, pure Lucina, smile on the birth of the child under whom the iron brood, which is the iron age, has ceased. That's why it says the iron brood shall at least cease and the golden race spring up throughout the world. Because they all knew that Saturn rules the golden age. Saturn is the, the ruler of Aquarius. And I would explain how this relates to Freemasonry in the United States and 
you know, and you will see what I'm talking about. Now, Hesed says, another guy says, the golden age is the only age that falls within the rule of Kronos. Kronos is the Greek word for Saturn, right? Created by the immortals who live on Olympus. These humans were said to live among the gods and freely mingle with them. Peace and harmony prevailed during this age. Humans did not have to work to feed themselves for the earth provided food and abundance. They lived to a very old age, but with the youthful appearance and eventually died peacefully. Their spirits live aren't as guardians. As you can see, Hesed is talking about the golden age now. Now this is not, what he's saying is it's just an allegory. Okay, because the golden age is about self journey. It's about an enlightenment period being, you know, as if you claim, if you choose to believe it, but about spirituality, uh, the age of awakening. Okay. Now in tarot, right? Tarot is the same thing. It, it, it knows whoever created the system of tarot actually knew or had an idea about this golden age. And that's why it's so interesting. Because uh, Aquarius, which is this new age of Aquarius, there's two planets that rule Aquarius, Uranus and Saturn. Okay. The Fool's card, which is the first card in the tarot, the ruler of the Fool's card is Uranus. The Fool's card, the first. There's 22 major arcanas, and you have the lesser arcanas. And the last card, which is the world card, is Saturn. You see? And the first card and the last card. As you know, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega. Right? I am the beginning and the end. Uranus is the alpha. Saturn is the omega. Okay. And whoever created this system knew uh, this kind of wisdom. Um, and some people don't know where the, the system of tarot derived from. Some people claim that it's Egyptian in origin. But it's a beautiful, interesting system. In the Bible, it is said actually in this age of Aquarius, right? So you got the 12 houses, right? For example, in, Jesus, in Luke 22, 10, this is said by Jesus. Behold, when you have gone into the city, a man carrying an earthen jug or pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him into the house which he enters. Aquarius is the only individual with a jug of water. Some people claim that uh, if, you, if you chose to believe it, you see, Aquarius occurs in January to February. Now, now according to Latin, ferebru means a purification. John the Baptist, supposedly January comes from January, and it's John who is the Aquarian age of the baptism of the water. This is why the Templars, supposedly, if you chose to believe this or not, um, they were called Jonahites because they worship Saint John. In Masonry, you have Saint John too. So there's some kind of connection there, supposedly, if you choose to believe that. Now, in the Bible, it talks about astrology. It talks about this, right? And you can see it here. Can thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades or lose the bands of Orion? Can thou bring forth Maserat? Maserat means constellation in Hebrew and his seasons. Or canst thou guide Arcturus, Arcturus, Arcturus with his sons, right? Now, in the this is in this is interesting. Okay, let me go back before I draw. I, I don't want to jump. Now, before I get to to the to sweet spots, um, now Aquarius is the the new age, but there are four fixed signs that will rule this new age. And they are all polar opposites of each other. Aquarius and Leo, the lion. Taurus and Scorpio, or the eagle. That's why the United States have the eagle, right? It rules the golden age. Those four fixed signs are the most important. And especially in masonry, the, you, you've seen these. And they're also called uh, uh, Caribs, Caribbeans. And the Bible... It is, if you read um, 
even in tarot, you see these images in tarot and actually in some of the Sumerian statues of a, some claim that the eagle, I mean, the, the sphinx is part of all those four fixed signs. Even in the Sumerians, you see a, a man with a, a human body, a, li a lioness body, uh, human face, lion claws, a bull's body in their wings, which represents the eagle, the four fixed signs. If you look at the Sumerian culture, you see that Caribbean. And, the, and then you can see the tarot cards. You can see the man, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus, and Leo. Now, in Ezekiel, this is in Ezekiel, this is in the Bible. He, claim, he says this, each of the four Caribbean had four faces. The first was the face of an ox. The second was a human face. The third was the face of a lion. And the fourth was the face of an eagle. Now, according to esotericists, those four fixed signs in Hebrew supposedly represent Jehovah without the vowel sounds. Um, and if you look out here in the card, you can see here those Hebrew word for Jehovah here. You can see he, you can see yod here, you can see vo, you can see he here. This is the word Jehovah and the wheel here. And this is this alpha and omega. Okay. And gematria in Hebrew, there is a, there's a knowledge called gematria, the use of the called gematria system, which has a lot of esoteric uh, elements to it. And Jehovah, gematria of Jehovah is 26. It's a very interesting number. So remember that number. The gematria for Jehovah is 26. Now, this is the interesting part here. Um, this, I get this information for one of my favorite esotericists, Paul Foster Case. And the time, you know, it might be inaccurate, but I'm just using the whole chart of it. Now, this is supposedly the birth chart of the United States of the time that the Declaration of Independence. July 4th, 1776, two in the afternoon. Now, I, apparently, I, anyone correct me if I'm wrong, but when the Philadelphia uh, well, let's first get into it first. So this is the signs. Now, here you have this, this here is Scorpio, the eagle. This is called the ascendant. Now look at the major sign. You see the black things here? You make a cross. And the opposite of Scorpio is Taurus. See it? And you have Leo in the midheaven. Then you have Aquarius, the man. See that? It's pretty interesting, right? even though July is the rule of cancer. Now, why cancer? Well, as I said to you, supposedly uh, Atlantis sunk in the age of cancer 12,000 years ago. It's kind of hard to explain the, uh, uh, how the, uh, the going to the ages and how the numbers add up, but it happened supposedly in the age of cancer. So, and it's a water sign. Now, I don't personally believe that Atlantis uh, existed. Now, I believe, and this is my belief, Atlantis means the, the sunking of Atlantis meant the falling of human consciousness, of spirituality of man. And we went into the dark ages, and now we are heading back into this new age again, to rebuild this new Atlantis. And that's what the United States, the founders of Masons that came here were supposedly was trying to say, to rebuild this new Atlantis, Solomon's house. Because Solomon means soul of man and Solomon's temple is the human body. Just remember that. So now if you remember whoever created or signed the paper to understood the stars, very, very interesting. They must have the science because it cannot be coincidence um, to have ascendant Scorpio and Taurus, Leo and Aquarius so perfectly aligned. Now, remember the number 26. Well, if you add up the signs in order in, in a circle, like the first sign is Aries, Taurus is the second sign, Gemini is the third sign, etc. 
The fifth sign, the second sign is Taurus. The fifth sign is Leo. The eighth sign is Scorpio. And the Aquarius is the 11th. That adds up to 26, the name for God. Okay. And it's interesting that the in Scorpio, the degrees here is 13 degrees and it's 13 columns. If you choose to believe that. Okay. But I believe whoever created this system knew something uh, about this ancient wisdom. Okay. Uh, another thing is 1776 in, in Gematria uh, is the, it means in, in Hebrew is uh, the salvation of Israel. It's interesting, okay, um, in Gematria. So, you know, that year, they might have chose that year as well. But uh, now this man here, Thomas J. Burgoyne, now this is, bef this, he wrote the book called uh, Light of Egypt, very complicated book. You can pick this book up. Um, it's called Astrology. It's the Science of the Soul. And this is what he says. And, you know, this is before the age of Aquarius was occurring. And he says, man whose nature is being tuned to a higher key. We must not forget that these cycles apply to the race and their effect. And to the individual only as an integral part of the masculine influence. And will consequently manifest its chief activities upon the masculine quality of the human soul. And today we have evidence of this in the gradual en enfranchisement of women, arousing the positive attributes of her nature and demanding equal rights with her brother, man in the political arena, as she has already done in the educational field. You can see this right now. You can actually see the equal rights of women, women and having, which is supposed to be, supposed to be, they're having a very big contribution in the politics and teachings and equal rights. And this is why it's, it's so beautiful that this new age is, is occurring because it's finally happening. They, they being recognized for this. He also says, the watery sign Pisces through which the sun manifests during the past 2,160 years gave up to man their secret powers and hidden contributes, I mean, hidden attributes to steam as a motive power which man has completely mastered. He would likewise master the airy forces during the present subcycle of the sun in Aquarius. Already, we see him using liquid air and compressed air as a motive power, which would gradually take the place of steam as the sun gets farther into the sign or constellation of Aquarius. Man will become immensely wiser than they have been. And it is to be hoped that they will leave the written record of their achievements in science and art to show the future races their status of mind on every subject for the edification and enlightenment of coming race. As you can see, you know, what he's basically saying now in the age now, you can see people are starting to wake up because the motto of Aquarius is, I know. That's the motto. And what he says at 2,160 years, the sun goes to each sign of the zodiac, 2,160 years, which is called the great year. And 2,000 already passed, 2,000 years in the age of Pisces. Now we are heading to age of Aquarius, the age of light, the airy sign, the age of I know, which is the motto of Aquarius. Well, science without conscience is but the ruin of the soul. And that is the end of my presentation. Uh, hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed it and you learned something interesting. I will leave it for answers and questions.